evening, everyone, my dear colleagues. It's so shady for job. So nice to see you. Uh, I hope you're all fine. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad to be with you again. Uh, today we have Inget Zoom Series 34. And wow. our guest is Professor Dr. Belgin Aydın. Uh, let me introduce her briefly. After having worked at uh, Anadolu University between 2004 and uh, 2008, uh, she started working uh, as the head of the LT department uh, at TED University in Ankara. Uh, she has a number of publications and conference presentations, both nationally and internationally. Her main in, uh, interest areas are uh, teacher training, technology in, uh, integration in language teaching, uh, distance learning, and curriculum development. This evening, her topic, the title of her talk is, Teacher, are you really listening to me? How can we give effective feedback? Belgin Hocam, thank you very much for accepting to be our guest this evening. Uh, and welcome again. The screen is yours. Aydan Hocam, Canım Hocam, thank you very much for the invitation. It's really a great honor for me to be here with you, with lots of great people. Uh, I've actually worked at Anadolu University much longer than you start. I worked there for 30 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took it from your... Uh, by your daytime, sorry, I misunderstood it, I guess. No problem, no problem. I think that time uh, period belongs to uh, the period that I work as the director of School of Foreign Languages uh, okay. at the Nodoli University. Okay. So there's a kind of a little bit misunderstanding. I need to improve no my problem. reading uh, comprehension, that's for no, sure. No, no, maybe it is one mistake, no problem at all, my job. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So um, let me start by sharing my screen. Oops, this is almost the middle. So I hope you can see it. And I hope you can hear me well. All right, um, today we will be talking about feedback. Actually, I've been reading and researching about uh, feedback recently and I've learned really interesting things. I mean, I say interesting things, they are not interesting, but uh, unfortunately, these are the things we are not I mean, when I say we, I was not familiar with some of the information and we have started uh, a kind of in-service training project with a school in Eskisha here, uh, with two of my friends. Uh, and we have, I mean, for um, almost since the beginning of this term, we have been having regular meetings with the teachers, online meetings, uh, and we have been doing some kind of in-service training, as I say, and uh, we are, somehow amazed with how much I'm familiar with uh, what feedback is and how to give feedback to their students. That's why I think this will be an interesting topic to share here. Uh, thanks for giving the chance to me, as I say. Uh, I would like to start with three questions. You see two of them here. I will stop sharing my screen in a moment and I will ask you to write your answers on the chat box. Uh, the first question is a yes, no question. It says, do you think teachers give effective feedback? Uh, I will give you time, don't worry. And the second one is how much time do you think teachers spend uh, their time on giving feedback? Let me share the third question with you too, and then I will remind you the questions. Uh, the third question is not a question, but it's a fill in the blank. <laughs> Without any blanks, we cannot leave you, no? <laughs> It is a fill in the blank activity, feedback increases learning, blah, blah, person. So let me stop sharing my screen and look at the chat box now. Uh, and reminding you the first question, it was a yes, no question. Do you think teachers give effective feedback? I have actually already given you the answer at the beginning. Yeah. Very little recent research suggests on the times. Okay. No, no. 
we don't know how to give feedback. Okay, thank you very much. I don't like that. Mark, would you like to explain what it depends on or would you like to wait to explain your opinion or not explain it at all? All right, sometimes. All right, great. Uh, now let me remind you the second question. The second question was a kind of pie chart and asking you how much of uh, our time do we spend uh, on giving feedback? I mean, think of a regular teacher, not yourself, maybe. Less than 80%. Mm -hmm. Less than 20, 30. Just to clarify the question, Bagginacham, is this teacher giving feedback to students or yes, teaching giving feedback to other teachers? Yeah, to students. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, we have two answers only. <clears throat> Very little. Okay, not trained to do it. Hi, boss. Hope so the answers range from 30 to 80, I guess. Now let me ask you the third question. The third question was a fill in the blank question, remember? Feedback increases learning, blah, blah, blah, person. The answer to the third question. You're a quick learner, I don't know, John. Eight person. Definitely 90%. Whoa, what a great number, Shiri. More than 80. All right. All right. Uh, now let's look at my answers. Actually, these are not my personal answers. These are the answers I got from the uh, research, of course. All right. Research says that the first question remember was uh, do the teachers give effective feedback according to the research 88 percent of the teachers believe that they give effective feedback but only 12 percent of the students believe that they receive effective feedback from the teachers so as you see there is a huge discrepancy between what teachers think they do and what students think they receive and the uh, second question was the pie chart. And again, the research says that teachers spend 60% of their time on giving instruction and only 11% on giving feedback. And the third question, feedback increases learning 50%. 50% is a great number in my opinion. I mean, almost half of the learning um, so feedback is really an important thing. Uh, it, throughout this presentation, I am uh, going to answer these six questions. What is feedback? Why it is important? Who do we get feedback from? What should we do to make feedback effective? What is feedback literacy? And the last one is how can we give feedback during online teaching? All right, let's start with the first one. What is feedback? Uh, I, I don't know, Jim, I don't know how interactive I should make it. I mean, if I was in a classroom, I would stop and ask audience opinions, but I mean, is this how you do it or is this a presentation from the presenter? Uh, well, it all depends on how you want to do it. Normally, if you do it uh, in an interactive manner, it takes longer because right. we are all teachers. When we start talking, we don't stop. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, so you just uh, manage your time yourself. You well, have you. about an hour, and then we will have a question answer session. All right, thank you very much for the answer. John, then let me continue with the answer. Uh, to answer this question, actually, I have decided to explain what feedback is not. Feedback is definitely not giving advice to students. It is not evaluating students. It is not grading them. It is not praising them, or it is not giving them suggestions. Then, because, I mean, these are some of the uh, misconceptions teachers might have. What is it then? It is information about 
how students are doing in their efforts to reach their goal. This uh, slide, actually, this picture, in my mind, explains what we think is very well, because, I mean, there is a kind of path learners go through, and during their journey, there are some stops or there are some question marks in their minds. So when you answer their questions in their minds with your feedback, uh, they can, even if they are not on the right path, they can come back to the right path. If they are going from the wrong ways, they do uh, come to the right one. So based on our feedback, students should be able to answer these three questions. What are they? What is my aim? What am I doing? How am I doing? What have I done to achieve my aim so far? And what exactly should I do to achieve my aim as the next step? If our feedback helps them to answer these three questions in their mind, then it is considered as effective feedback. Okay, uh, so after defining what feedback is, which is uh, one of the most important components, uh, I guess, because both in the students' minds and in the uh, teacher's mind, uh, clarifying what we mean by feedback is really important. I mean, students generally complain that they, Teachers, um, sorry, teachers generally complain that their students don't get the feedback they receive. They just look at the grade and they don't look at the paper and the details of uh, what they are saying to the students. But it may not be so. Uh, let me explain it again with the research results. When we uh, ask this question, why feedback is important? The answer is because it increases learning by 50%. So if the, that is the only reason actually feedback is really important. But let's look at a more detailed research results. Um, research tells us that students course evaluation and the amount of feedback they receive uh, is uh, very parallel to each other. They believe that the more feedback they get from the teachers, the more effective the course is or vice versa. If they fail from the course, uh, they believe it is because of the lack of feedback they uh, had in, during the course because they were not aware of the, uh, their progress. That's why they fail. And this slide again summarizes research results. Uh, some of the um, results may be contrary dictated to what we generally believe on feedback, uh, because as I say, some teachers complain that students don't just care the feedback we give. Actually, the uh, picture is not like that, because uh, when students are asked their opinion on what, how feedback is important for them, they say that uh, feedback they receive shows they are valued by the teacher and they are cared by the teacher and just getting grades don't help their improvement. These are what students think. And they would like to get more detailed feedback for their improvement and more immediate feedback. Uh, this is uh, something we should underline. Immediate feedback makes it effective. And they uh, state that common mistakes should be explained with good examples by the teachers. And they should get oral feedback as a class and they prefer written feedback individually. They don't want to hear about their individual mistakes in front of their friends. So as a result, we can say that timely and descriptive feedback helps students to see strong and weak aspects of their learning and it, it improves future performance. And definitely, as a result, it improves learning. Uh, this is another result slide, actually. Uh, we might maybe reconsider giving direct instruction to our students because remember, uh, according to the pie chart, uh, it was saying that we spent 60% of our time uh, giving instruction to the students and only 11% uh, giving feedback. And less 
direct instruction and more feedback would definitely lead to better results and more learning for the students. Any questions so far? We have already answered the first two questions. Am I too fast? I don't know. I don't know, John, would you like to give me feedback? <laughs> All right. The third question is, who do we get feedback from? And the answer is actually uh, obvious. And uh, this is something most of the teachers are familiar with, but um, it might be difficult to do it in reality. Uh, this slide says in order to make feedback sustainable, we need to encourage peer feedback and self-evaluation. We can then help our learners to be able to regulate their own learning and rather than depend on teacher feedback only. So it is a kind of life skill. We need to help our learners improving themselves. They need to be able to self-evaluate what they are doing and they need to be able to give feedback to their peers. And uh, there are really lots of great um, tools, online tools for both peer feedback and self evaluation These are just the two examples I uh, put here. Uh, for peer feedback, there is a kind of tool called Flu. Uh, you might want to check after this presentation or tomorrow or next week, whenever you wish. And for self evaluation um, Cambridge developed something right and uh, improved. Uh, this is for almost, not almost, for all proficiency levels of learners, even for some uh, other learning groups, it uh, helps you give, I mean, using artificial intelligence, actually, you get feedback from uh, this web tool. And it really is a great tool. I strongly advise all my students uh, use it for their writing. And um, this slide summarizes why self-evaluation is important. I'm not going to read all of them, but I would like to just underline the last one. It gives them responsibility of their own learning, which is something we really need to uh, improve on our learners. If we want them to be autonomous learners and to be successful individuals, not only in the classroom, but in their lives, uh, learning how to evaluate themselves is a skill they need to uh, improve. Uh, but we need to teach them how to do this. We need to teach them how to evaluate themselves and how to give feedback to each other. Any fourth question then? What should we do to make feedback effective? Maybe the most important question. A Turkish saying here. I'm going to read it and then try to translate. The Turkish version was much better. That's why I prefer to uh, use the Turkish one. Peter says, "Söyledim duydu anlamına gelmez. Duydu doğru anladı anlamına gelmez. Anladı hak verdi anlamına gelmez. İnandı uyguladı anlamına gelmez. Uyguladı sürdürecek anlamına gelmez." Bazı şeyler bazı anlama gelmez, says Pieta. Uh, so he is trying to tell us that when we say something to our students, it doesn't mean that they will really get it, they will understand it. And even if they do understand it, it doesn't mean that they have really understood it correctly. And let's suppose that they understood it correctly, it doesn't mean that they agree with us. Even if they agree with us and they uh, believe that what we are saying is correct, uh, it doesn't mean that they are going to apply it in their life. Even if they do, it doesn't mean that they are continue uh, to do what we have taught them. So isn't it a nice kind of poetic saying explaining uh, the importance of feedback? Uh, now let's look at some very commonly used feedback examples by the teachers. I mean, these are the sentences we are, as I say, uh, very familiar with. We hear them a lot from the teachers. Um, let's, uh, let's suppose that a teacher is saying, Ali, this sentence, Ali, I'm expecting a better performance the next time. So if I were Ali, I would think better performance. I mean, was this a bad one or was this a good one? But the teacher is expecting a better one. So how 
should I make it better? What should I do to make it better? What does it mean for me? So Ali will have lots of question marks by hearing this sentence from the teacher. Or the second one is for Ahmed. Uh, the teacher now says that Ahmed, very good, well done Ahmed. Okay, now I am Ahmed, let's say, very good, well done. Okay, so does that mean the teacher really liked the examples I used? Uh, was my conclusion really great? Uh, I was having trouble with the, let's say, trans transition. So were they good now? Uh, so even if you are giving a good feedback to Ahmed, it doesn't help Ahmed improve his performance because it is not descriptive. Uh, now let's look at what the teacher is saying to Aisha. Aisha, I wouldn't expect such a performance from you. All right, it depends on how you say it, actually. I wouldn't expect such a performance from you might mean the teacher is really angry uh, with Aisha because Aisha was always doing great, but this time Aisha is not a, a successful, is not showing a successful performance, let's say, or it might mean just the opposite. Aisha was not a good student, but this time she is performing well. So is this a kind of I mean, insult for Aisha or what? Uh, now let's look at Mustafa. Mustafa, you did not use the references correctly. So, okay, so now the Mustafa, this is more specific, but still Mustafa will think that were all of them incorrect? And what should I do to make it correct? I mean, what was incorrect with the, the way I used the references? Mustafa will still have question marks in his mind. Uh, this method is highly uh, suggested in literature using sandwich method and always starting with a positive feedback and ending with a positive feedback and uh, in the middle telling them how to uh, make it better. <laughs> this is a double burger actually. But um, th this is an old method suggested. The recent re literature Tries not to use it a lot, to be careful while using this method because uh, they, they think there is a danger here because you start with a positive thing and you end with a negative thing and that constructive thing might be lost in the student's mind or in the persons you are telling it to. So uh, they, they uh, warn us to be really careful with how we are using it. And there is an example here uh, of, of an effective feedback. It's a long one, let me read it a lot since you are not talking. Okay, this is now to Asla. Asla, I like what you produced. Okay, the teacher starts with a positive comment as in the sandwich method and then the teacher explains why she likes the teachers. I mean, the, the good teachers are always she, by the way. Uh, if there's a better example, <laughs> it is he. <laughs> Asla, I like what you produced. You started with a very well explained argument and supported it with literature. I'm glad to see that you are using very recent and related sources. I especially love your ending, which is well the summary of your argument and a thought-provoking question. So all this part was the uh, button part, the, the, the good part, the positive part. I just have two suggestions. Now the constructive part comes which I believe will even improve your well-organized assignment. Firstly, your ideas are very really creative, but you might reconsider how you relate each idea with the others. Secondly, while I think your examples are very creative, you need to give more detailed explanations on your relation with your main argument. As a result, now comes the uh, other positive part. I appreciate your efforts on this well-organized assignment. I can clearly see how much time you spend on it. Thank you for your, for your enthusiasm. So if I were asked, I would really be glad with such a feedback from the teacher because the teacher is really appreciating the effort uh, I have spent on this assignment. And there are suggestions. There are very descriptive, clear, concrete suggestions telling me how to improve my performance even better for the next time. Now, I would like to continue with my um, 
favorite traffic lights. As you see, there are two traffic lights here. The first one represents the cognitive and the other one represents the affective light. Uh, to explain what cognitive traffic light means, I will just continue with the next slide and then come back to this one. Confucius explains what cognitive traffic light is uh, with this quotation, if the language is not correct, then what is said is not what is meant. If what is said is not what is meant, then we, what ought to be done remains undone. So I, I really loved it when I found it uh, on Google. So cognitive feedback refers to the language we use, what we say to the students. And effective feedback refers to the nonverbal uh, part of our feedback. So this is what we mean with our with the language, with our gestures, with the tone of our voice, with everything. And as you see, there are three types of uh, lights here. The red one refers to negative feedback. So cognitive negative feedback would be, no, it is incorrect. Or anything else meaning, no, it is incorrect. And the uh, uh, green one means, yes, it is correct. Or anything else meaning that. And the yellow one is a question mark. It might be because of various reasons. The teacher may not be really sure of what to say, or the teacher may say, I really haven't understood what you are trying to tell me. So this is a question mark here. And effective feedback, I said, is what we mean. <clears throat> the, the, these are without words. No means, I mean, anything meaning not nodding your head, I mean, your look, your body language, your voice, um, tone of voice as you say no. Uh, this is the right one. And green one is again, anything meaning yes, just, I mean, doing thumbs up, nodding your head again, smiling to the students or anything uh, meaning yes. And the yellow one is again a question mark, your, uh, the way you, you look at the students or I mean, uh, the, the way you use the language. And the literature says that we have to give red cognitive feedback to the students if what they are producing is incorrect. It has to be taught to the students. Otherwise, it might cause the fossilization. If you continue ignoring or if you continue saying yes to the students, students will mislearn that item. So we have to tell it. But the effective feedback we use should always be green. Even if we are saying it is incorrect, even if we are saying we haven't understood what the student is saying, we have to say it in a way that we are encouraging students. I really love these traffic lights and uh, I try to remember it not only in the classroom with, but with any type of communication I have with the people outside the classroom. Okay, so uh, when we talk about effective feedback, we are actually talking about two key concepts here. We are talking about feedback literacy and creating a feedback culture uh, in the school environment or in our classroom. And feedback literacy is, please remind me to talk about these Chinese girls, even if I forget, because they are important here. Feedback literacy is actually knowledge of what feedback is, why it is given, and how it should be used for improvement. So students should know what we are doing when we give them feedback and why it's important for them, why we are giving it, and how they can use it to improve themselves. And uh, there are uh, three dimensions of feedback literacy. Knowing, knowing refers to knowing all these things I said in the previous part, knowing what feedback is, why it is important and how it should be used for improvement. Being, okay, let me explain acting before uh, I talk about being. Uh, acting is acting on that. So the teacher is telling you to do certain things and you act upon it. 
Being is related to our emotions, actually. You know, when uh, we get feedback from another person, we might uh, have different reactions, emotional reactions. Sometimes we might get angry uh, because we might think that we have really tried hard and the teacher doesn't get it. Or we might think that we have really tried hard, but the teacher is just considering the incorrect parts uh, we have produced. So some people might be fragile. Some people might be more logical. They might think that, okay, uh, I see what uh, my mistakes are, so I will correct them. I will go to the acting stage. Uh, some people might, I mean, depending on our personality, I think, what we do in the second part being uh, might differ. So as teachers, our job is, again, um, helping our students to gain this feedback literacy by also dealing with their emotions. We need to explicitly tell them that what we are saying, what we are writing down as feedback is only trying to help them improve themselves. It has nothing to do with their personality. It has nothing to do with, with them, but it, it has things to do with the product they have. So uh, this emotional side might also be a, a part of our training in the classrooms. And there are really nice activities teaching that there are different types of feedback. Uh, given by different students, or you might use your examples uh, you use with the students and just uh, give them to the students and tell how they would react if they receive such feedback. And they, they do talk about their feelings very well. Uh, as I say, with the project we are doing right now, we are training teachers uh, of a school, teaching all levels, and even very young learners are talking about their feelings very well. I mean, you are just amazed at how they can express what they feel. And if they cannot, I don't know if I said it, let me repeat it if not, even if I did. If uh, they cannot uh, go over this being stage and deal with their emotions, they cannot act upon uh, the feedback and improve themselves. Now, now I have rem remembered uh, the Chinese students in um, a study. Uh, they are talking about Chinese girls having education in London and having feedback from their British teachers. And they talk about their hearts uh, being broken because they think that they have tried hard, but the British teachers uh, just underlined all the mistakes they made. So they, they took it personally and they could not go over the second stage of being. Okay, so this slide actually is a, a summary of all the steps helping our students to be a feedback literate. It says to improve feedback literacy, students should know why the assignment is given, the reason of that, the rationale behind that, and what they will gain by doing that explicitly and how it will be evaluated at the very beginning of uh, the assignment giving stage and how much time they have to do it and which sources they can use to do the assignment and how they can evaluate themselves after they finish doing it and how the teacher will evaluate it, which are very related stages and how much teacher, how, much time, how much time, sorry, the teacher will need to evaluate it and what kind of actions they can take based on the feedback they receive. So as you see, it is not only the teacher giving the assignment to the students <clears throat> and the students doing the assignment and giving it back to the teacher. There are stages of that. Uh, we can train our learners to improve their literacy. And um, these are the questions students can ask to themselves to be literate. What are my main, what are the main points my teacher is focusing on? What are my strengths? What should I continue doing? What are my weaknesses? What should I stop doing? How can I benefit from this feedback for my future assignments? 
Are there any points I haven't understood? What should I ask to my teacher? I think they are all clear. As you see <clears throat> in the last step, the, if there is anything uh, not clear to the student, the student should be asking it to the teacher. So it is a kind of dialogue actually between the teacher and the student. It is not a one way giving from the teacher to the student. Okay, now uh, this slide, I mean, the next slide, we'll be talking about the obstacles of feedback, uh, which we see. Some students, even if we give them feedback, they may not get it. There might be some obstacles they have. Now I will stop sharing my screen. Since I am feeling tired, I will stop talking. And uh, I'll be explaining five uh, obstacles to feedback uh, students. I mean, the, the reasons why students are not getting feedback from the teachers. So uh, I'm not going to have a breakout room discussion since uh, we may not want to spend lots of time. Can you please write down at least one obstacle you think uh, some students might be experiencing? Shall I repeat uh, what I said? We will be talking about five obstacles causing students not to receive feedback the teacher is giving. Cultural, okay. Mm -hmm. Tony, is this a new answer or the answer of the previous one? Oh, Joan, sorry, I'm, I'm hiding today because my, I'm having a bad hair day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I've not been able to get to a hairdresser's in two weeks. Uh -huh. No, I, I, it was it was one of one of the obstacles I've I found, especially here in Janum Turkey, when they have native speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, a lot of students will say that perhaps they're more relaxed at giving and receiving, you know, with um, non-Turkish teachers, but. There are cultural issues that, you know, come up, you know, some native speakers are just too blunt in your face, you know, and, and that, you know, prevents blockages which really come from culture. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Tony. Any, any other answer you would like to write down or talk about? I would say uh, losing their face. They are so afraid that um, their friends are going to laugh at them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. They don't want to get any feedback. This is for oral feedback given in the classroom. I'm not talking right. about written feedback between the uh, teacher and the student. All right. Thank you very much, Rajan, for the contribution. Uh, if, okay. Let me just continue with my reasons then. Okay, let's look at what the literature is saying to us. Uh, the first one is not finding feedback useful. If they don't think they are going to uh, use it, I mean, if they say, so what, Yana, how is it going to help me? Then they don't use it. And the second one is not knowing what to do with the feedback they receive. They might find it useful, but if they don't know how to act on that, then again, they don't use it. Not having specific and individual feedback, the other is the other reason. If it is not specific, descriptive and individual, then it is not going to help me as a learner. And number four is finding teachers sound very authoritative, which is actually interesting if they think you are being an authoritative teacher and this, this is my, uh, this is what I can produce and you don't like it and well, your style, is not something I like, so I'm not going to use the feedback you are giving to me, might be said by some students, and not comprehending the given feedback is uh, 
the last one. This might be due to the language we use, especially the, the meta language we use. If they don't understand all those signs or the meta language we have on students' paper, then they may not use it. Okay, this is the last question, uh, which says how we can give feedback during online teaching. And I am sure you are all familiar with the answers I will be giving to you because we have been doing that for almost one and a half years. And we can categorize uh, three types of feedback here as written, oral, and visual. And as I say, I mean, you are familiar with all these things, but I would like to underline, especially with online teaching, uh, giving oral and visual feedback might be more beneficial for the students. I mean, just recording your voice or re recording yourself on a Zoom uh, session, for example, you might do it with the student uh, in one-to-one -one individual sessions, or you might just uh, have a Zoom session by yourself. And as if you are talking to the student, you might record your feedback they love it they do love it and especially if as i say since this is online since they are already far from us they do love uh, getting oral and visual feedback and th this is again what the literature is saying and th these are some of the most commonly used tools for written oral and visual feedback i have been using flipgrid a lot in my classes both to give feedback and um to ask students to do some kind of task, various tasks, which is a very, very, very practical tool uh, to use and to learn, and students just love it. They have short videos on certain tasks, as I say, to introduce themselves, to talk about anything, then they can give feedback to each other, they can give feedback to themselves. Uh, so, as I say, these are just a few examples, a few commonly used examples. So we are almost at the end. Um, this is a kind of summary of what I have been talking so far while giving feedback. We need to make sure that our expectations are clear. Our students are clear about our expectations. And we go over our evaluation criteria with good and bad examples. Going over the criteria we will be using to evaluate students as we give the assignment is really important, not at the end at the beginning and our feedback is explicit our feedback is specific to the individual student and it is timely i think this is really important if i mean students are already doing the 10th assignment and you are giving them uh, feedback to their second assignment it really does not mean anything it is just a waste of time for you and for the students um this the slide summarizes the ideal process we might go through. So after giving the assignment, giving them feedback, and helping them to reflect on the assignment and the, on the feedback, and then showing them the grade. Otherwise, as uh, we have been talking, uh, some students just might just focus on the grade and skip uh, the feedback you are giving to them and they may not be really doing self-reflection on their performance and on your feedback. So as a result, uh, in the old approach, giving feedback was explaining things to the students, presenting them things, presenting our ideas of what we think of what they are producing. But the new approach says it is a communication. It is a dialogue between the students and the teachers of planning and presenting feedback of the actions taken based on the feedback. And, uh, this is the last slide. I wanted to uh, end this presentation with what Ajar Bantash is saying. He says it is not experience which improves people, it is feedback we receive from the others. Isn't it nice? And these are some of the main references uh, I used, if you are interested in that. So I will stop sharing my screen.
and wait for your comments or any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Bagin Ojam. It was very nice. In fact, uh, I guess we also started um, questioning ourselves whether we know how to give feedback or not. <laughs> when you uh, ask us certain questions. Uh, in the chat box, there are some questions and I would like to follow uh, these in a chronological order. If I can go to Marco Jam's question. Marco Jam, um, you're there, right? Uh, you asked a question about how do Ooh. we know uh, whether our feedback is effective on us. Remember that? Could you please ask that question yourself? I cannot find it now. Hi, Obergen Ojam. Ojam, my question was, how do we evaluate? So we spend all this time and effort giving feedback to our students. How do we know that we've been successful? How do we evaluate that all our energy has been a success or, or, or maybe not a success? Uh, great question, Mark. I think the only way of evaluating our feedback is asking it to the students. I mean, asking what they think about it, asking whether they agree with us, whether they understand what we are trying to tell them, whether they like it or not, whether there was anything missing in our feedback. I mean, getting feedback to our feedback, actually, from the <laughs> students. <laughs> Since uh, the <laughs> dialogue and um, a more concrete uh, evaluation would be their uh, better performance. I mean, if they can act upon what we say and make their performance better, then it shows that we are on the right way. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jam. Tony has, uh, in fact, two questions, and both are very challenging believe me mm -hmm. I, yeah. I wouldn't want to be in your place now <laughs> Tony yes, would you like to ask your own questions you need to unmute yourself you look wonderful <laughs> don't worry unmute yourself first Tony yes, unmute you yourself microphone microphone microphone very little commute me apart from me. Uh huh. I don't know. No. Um. Thanks a lot, Belgin Ojan. That was that was really good, and I I, I love the the area of, of feedback literacy. Um, I think early on in our discussion, um, we were kind of hinting, um, that teachers ourselves you know, um, weren't very good at giving feedback. Mm -hmm. Now, in your section on, on feedback, you focused a lot on um, student feedback literacy levels. So my question is, if you had a magic wand <laughs> and you could do something to improve um, the feedback literacy levels of teachers, in Jannam Turkiyem, let's keep it relevant, yeah? What would you use your magic wand for? And I know a, a big interest of yours is teacher training as well. Yeah. yeah. What would you change with your magic wand? See, that's an easy question. Yeah, it is. I have that magic wand, don't you? <laughs> ah, can I borrow it from time to time? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had that. Um, I talked about a project we have been uh, doing with a school teacher. I don't want to give yeah. his name at the moment, but um, they we are working with foreign language teachers, mm -hmm. and um, we have been doing I don't know how many uh, sessions we had with them, but we uh, divided our training into three mod modules, and okay. the, they refer to knowing, being, and acting uh, yeah. parts of the heart of feedback. So uh, what, how we started with the, the training of those teachers was, first of all, um, getting the picture of what they are doing and what they know about feedback. So, so we kind of prepared a questionnaire asking their uh, applications, their mm -hmm. understanding of what feedback, what kind of feedback they give, how they give it, what tools they use. We asked them to send their samples of feedback they give to their students. So it was a kind of huge um, 
kind of needs analysis. So mm -hmm. we, we try mm -hmm. to understand what they have, what they know, what they do. And we asked, we prepared a similar questionnaire to the students and we asked similar questions to the students. Mm -hmm. We asked them what kind of feedback they receive from their teachers, how they receive it, whether they use it or not, whether they like it or not, what they do with the feedback they uh, gain from the, their teachers. And uh, we started with understanding the picture, first of all, and we shared the answers of both the students and the teachers to them at the very beginning. So mm. they have understood what the other teachers are doing and what the students are perceiving of what they are, they are doing. So this was a great uh, beginning. And then uh, we started with, as I say, with the knowing part. So in the first module, we talked about uh, what feedback is. We actually did not talk about what feedback is. We tried to they help them understand their knowledge of feedback. So mm -hmm. we, we try to have a kind of common definition of what feedback is for them, mm -hmm. for their school context. So uh, after having, I mean, there are some certain activities actually in the literature. Uh, we, we did those activities. And uh, with each activity, with each step, we uh, help them to understand what feedback is, that knowing part is, but they should know about it and what their students should know. So it was a kind of two-way training. So it was both referring to the teachers, what they have, what they know, what they do. And also it was referring to what kind of activities they might use with their own students to increase their students' feedback literacy. And uh, we did this with all these three steps and we are almost at the end of uh, the training session. And uh, after each module, we get their reflection and their feedback on what they get and how they reflect it to their applications in the classroom. And they are so cute. They use it in their classes with their students. And uh, they send us their video recordings. Mm. Uh, and you really need to see how students are reacting. And, you really need to see how teachers consciousness level is increasing. They, they, they just admit that they did not know anything on feedback and they did not know how to give it. And they just did not consider the student's perspective at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, what, what, what, what, what I'm hearing, I mean, I, I, I like the methodology, I like the approach, but it, it, it seemed to focus on a specific training intervention yeah. Yeah, with trainers supporting them. Do, do you think something like that might be possible on a more independent basis? Maybe if we developed a, a self-paced uh, program that more teachers can do. I mean, your teachers are obviously yeah. very lucky, yeah, but, but a way to speed up the, pro the, the, the process on a... Sure, sure, why not? Bigger scale. <laughs> Yeah, and we can even earn money on that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an edupreneur, an edupreneur. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. uh, Maggie you know, Jam, I, I have uh, some other questions in the chat box. I have seen them. Don't worry, I'm going to uh, let you ask your own questions. But I have one question. You have given an example where you... Uh, used uh, a kind of um, sandwich. Oh my God, yummy again. I'm thinking of that sandwich right now. Um, where you first started with the uh, positive uh, statement and then uh, you added, I liked this and that, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, in fact, there are two points that I need to underline and I would like to hear what you think about these. One thing is, I have read in uh, several different uh, research studies that when you say, I like your work, but mm -hmm. students do not listen to this but part. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's a joke about it. That is the but part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the other thing is, again, from psychology, it uh, says using I language mm -hmm. is more effective than you language. When you say you need to give more examples, 
students do not take it positively, but if you say, I would like to see more examples to understand this. So it's, it's like you are acting as if you're the moron there. <laughs> and you need help, you know, that kind of thing. So I would like to hear your uh, opinion on this, but situation and <laughs> I language versus you language situation. Well, both are great points. I don't know, John, thank you very much. Uh, as you say, in the recent literature, the sandwich method is uh, actually a little bit criticized just because of the reason you have explained. Uh, it is said that students might uh, lose that bad part, <laughs> focusing on the positives only. So especially in business area, uh, if you want to give feedback to your workers, employers, uh, don't use the sandwich method, use pizza method. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't have such a method, but just tell them what to improve and how to improve. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be uh, starting with a positive thing. But I mean, this is something personal. And personally, I always would love to start with a positive comment because I mean, this is something I would like to get because I mean, students have been, this, this was uh, what students in the videos, those young kids were saying, mm -hmm. I've tried a lot and I don't like my teacher just to focus on the mistakes I've made. Mm -hmm. the, the teacher should see that I really tried a lot. So starting with a positive comment, I believe is always necessary, especially in education, especially with younger kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, what about the second half? I language. Um, to answer that question, let, let me uh, give an example from my students while I was talking about this feedback literacy with my own pre-service teachers. They said, Hojan, when you give us written feedback, we read it from your voice. Hmm. So we, we, we read as if Bagin Oje is talking to us. And since they are already familiar with my style, with the way I deal with the mistakes, with them, with their performance, even if, I mean, uh, they say, even if you say something bad, I mean, if, even if you focus on our mistakes, we, we don't get it incorrectly because uh, we, we hear your voice. We try to visualize how you say it, what we are trying to tell us. So I think that this definitely depends on the relationship you have with your students. Okay. But definitely I language is much better than your language. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Junaid Demir Hocam, are you with us now? Uh, he has a question. Uh, would you like to ask yes, your own yes, question? Yes, I am. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, Berg Hocam, thank you for your presentation. I think always uh, feedback and motivation uh, reach your street. Uh, I want to ask a question about uh, the uh, superiority of uh, the feedback types. You know that Generally, we use uh, teacher feedback, uh, peer feedback, and I think um, now we use self-editing uh, also in order to correct the student's mistakes. But I want to ask whether um, can we mention a superiority of these uh, feedbacks? For example, uh, teacher feedback is much more effective than peer feedback or self-editing. Is it possible to say such a thing? Uh, do you have any study that uh, compare it this uh, feedback types on students uh, or not, uh, if you don't, uh, do you have an idea on that? Thank you. Junito uh, John, thank you. This is really a great question. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, I haven't uh, come up with any literature results uh, talking about the superiority of one type to the other one, but uh, I mean, the, the, this is because I haven't really looked at that. <clears throat> I haven't asked that question to myself. But uh, in one of the slides, remember it was saying that for sustainability, uh, self-reflection is really important and peer uh, feedback is really important. So I think rather than waiting for the teachers to give you the feedback, self-reflection should always be the first step. I don't know which one is more important than the other one, which one is superior, but as a learner, they should be trained that after finishing a kind of performance, whether written or oral, they should stop and evaluate themselves because this self-evaluation means they are aware of the requirements, they are aware that why they are doing that, what the learning outcome is, what they will gain by doing this assignment. 
th this is really very crucial. I mean, this is really very important for me. If uh, they can gain that awareness, th th this is even more important than the teacher feedback. But uh, as you say, they may not be uh, knowledgeable enough or they may not have that proficiency of giving feedback of seeing all their, um, I don't want to say mistakes, but to make it better, let's say, so then the teacher should always be there to help them to take one more step in their journey, I think. I don't know if this would be an answer to your question. What do you think of um, sleep on it idea? Mm -hmm. I love it. I always Because use uh, my students that. usually uh, mm -hmm. want to go through their work immediately after they are done and I say no no no don't touch it now sleep on it tomorrow after you have your morning coffee mm -hmm. have another look yeah what what do you think of that John, this is a great strategy and isn't it something we always do in our real life I mean after we finish something we don't just send it to a journal uh, for publication we edit it lots of times actually. And th this is a kind of training we need to give to our learners too. I mean, uh, just writing the last sentence and putting a full stop doesn't mean that they have finished with mm -hmm. it. They should mm -hmm. uh, internalize it, sleep on it as you say. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that, because I have seen that in the chat box, uh, do you believe that students take teacher feedback more positively than peer feedback? Um, they, <coughs> I don't know if it would be more positively, but I would say that uh, because of the applications or misapplications of peer feedback and self-evaluation, since we are not training them how to give feedback to each other, they don't trust to each mm. other and they don't know how to give feedback to each other mm. because as I say, it really requires training and it is not an easy thing to do. Okay. Uh, it, it, it is a long process, but I mean, once we can achieve that, I mean, if we can achieve it in uh, previous learners of education, then mm -hmm. we have students at the university level, uh, we would be much happier mm -hmm. with the skills they have already have. Thank you very much. Elis Akai Hoca, uh, are you with us? Yes, I don't know, Jam, I'm here. Would you like to ask your own question, please? Thank you. Uh, Bagin Hocam, it was a very fruitful presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is this, what can we do if a student continues to do the same mistakes, even though we give them the necessary feedback all the time? Uh, may I give an example? For example, I had a student last term in the spring term. Uh, he was writing essays uh, and uh, I gave him feedback, uh, very detailed feedback I gave him, uh, but he continued to do the same mistakes. In fact, this touches upon the uh, subject that Tony Gör Hocam uh, uh, talked about uh, a few weeks ago, fossilized errors. But uh, in terms of giving feedback, what can we do uh, to help the student uh, act upon his uh, mistakes uh, in terms of giving feedback? Mm. No, oh, a tough question. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> fossilized items are really difficult to change because they are the items that are learning already. So there is learning there. So, and uh, it is really difficult to change that mislearning to uh, real learning situation. I don't know, uh, Tony, if you would like to help me with the answer, but we need to spend more uh, time on that and more effort on that focus on those socialized items more, helping students to realize that they are really socialized and there is really, um, the, the, the, there is really a problem students need to focus on that. Yusuf, are you going to answer this, this question or will you ask another question? Sorry? I used, Yusuf just raised his hand oh, and I sorry. he's going to say something related to this one. I, I don't know if this is a... a Yusuf Hocam, if uh, you want uh, to say something, you need... Huh? Okay, you need to unmute yourself. Oh, first of all, let me send my best regards to all of you, especially to Aydan Hoca, also Bergin Hoca, and those other audience 
it is very nice, interesting, and crucial topic that tonight you discussed. Feedback is very, um, let me say, important for teachers. But here, yeah, uh, I want only uh, share my own idea, uh, which I recommend to my students. I always uh, ask my students, whenever they want to become teacher, they should put uh, themselves uh, in the students' shoes. Mm -hmm. How the uh, teachers want to be given feedback by their teachers mm -hmm. without losing their face when they have communication or dialogues or spoken language or when they have, uh, let me say, uh, using spoken language, the teacher should know whether the students has uh, competence, uh, uh, let me say, or performance, um, a lack of knowledge. That's why I ask them to record uh, their uh, teaching, then go to home and, uh, let me say, watch the uh, way that the, the techniques that they applied in the classroom. Maybe they share uh, the recording, let me say visual or oral, uh, and share with the uh, friends, teachers, and uh, find some solutions to the best techniques to give, let me say, feedback. That's why they should consider and put themselves, uh, let me say, I have some problems with my microphone uh, puts themselves in shoes of their students. Would it be useful if they record their, let me say, teaching classes? Mm -hmm. Definitely, Yusuf, uh, it is uh, definitely a great strategy to record themselves and uh, sleep on it, as I don't know, John says, and then uh, see what kind of feedback you are giving it uh, to students and how you are giving it uh, to the students. In this uh, in-service training we, uh, project we are doing with the teachers, they have admitted that while giving feedback, they never considered their students' uh, uh, feelings. They said, we never looked at it from the student's perspective. We always try to uh, make ourselves clear, but we, this was an area we just ignored. We just did not think about it. And now they are realizing uh, how important it is for the students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you. Thank you, Yusuf Hocam. Erhan Gülşen uh, Hocam uh, also raising his hand. Uh, yes, Hocam. Uh, Go can ahead. you hear me? We can. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, actually, it's not a question. I would like to answer the question uh, that uh, the last I mean, I, I couldn't catch the name. It was about uh, the teach, uh, the student was not responding the responding to the feedback mm -hmm. or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm referring to the instructor who has uh, just asked a question to you. So uh, uh, she said her did uh, she gave a very detailed feedback, mm -hmm. uh, a very detailed piece of feedback. Actually, uh, that that shouldn't be the way because uh, in the uh, in re recent research, uh, uh, the researchers say uh, there is also one uh, issue that we should uh, you know consider. It's working memory. If we give a lot of feedback, very detailed feedback, the students may not uh, you know take them into consideration. So what we what we should do uh, is to decompose our feedback. So just focus on some parts uh, in the first time. And then uh, let's say first vocabulary, then grammar, then certain grammar topics. So that should be the way. So we should decompose the feedback types. Uh, we should uh, concentrate on the learner types. Uh, we should concentrate on working memory because if you uh, put a lot of feedback onto, onto a piece of writing, that might you know, cause some extremist load. And they may not, uh, how can I say, they may not uh, understand, grasp what you say. 
and you need to uh, highlight the feedback or you need to, uh, how can I say, direct your attention to that particular uh, piece of feedback. So that's actually what I exp experience. If I give a lot of feedback on, on a piece of writing, the students, they don't uh, recognize most of them. Yeah, because uh, it's a piece of writing that uh, needs to be reconstructed and that gives a burden on their working memory. Mm -hmm. So what we should do is to decompose it into different parts. For example, this week, if we are talk, if we are if we are referring to the same students, let's focus on vocabulary, and next week let's focus on grammar. And so you should focus on some certain you know mistakes at one time. So that that can be the you know way to direct that a particular student or to help that particular student to uh, rectify his or her mistakes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Arhan Hocam, that's a good point. And you Bergen know, I need to, uh, I, I just don't feel comfortable with this. Now, feedback and correction, I think are getting confused here. Are, are we talking about correction uh, or feedback? Because uh, segregated approaches where you deal with vocabulary or grammar or one aspect of grammar, that these are not integrated. They are segregated. You're just slicing language into smaller pieces, and I don't feel comfortable with that. So can you please briefly tell us how correction uh, is different from feedback, or is it different? It definitely is different, I don't know, John. Uh, remember, at the very beginning of the presentation, we talked about the definition of feedback, and we said it is giving descriptive information about uh, where students are, what they are doing, how they are doing, <clears throat> and it is describing the process for them. So a correction is, uh, might be only a small part of uh, our feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, is okay the answer I would give and uh, to add to um, the answer of the facilitation or the student not benefiting from feedback, I would like to remind you the obstacles uh, for some students for not receiving feedback. So the student might be experiencing some of those obstacles. Maybe the student is really finding your style very authoritative or for any other reason, maybe the student just doesn't understand what you are trying to tell him. Uh, and as Arhanu just said, actually giving lots of explanations, lots of corrections might be found authoritative. Mm. And that's why the student may not like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you suggesting that uh, we should focus on one point only? I'm not saying vocabulary grammar, but one point, for example, one section of the work only. Is that your suggestion or should we? No, that is not my suggestion, actually. Okay. My suggestion would depend on the learning outcome, what we are okay. trying to achieve. I mean, True. Uh, in True. some learning outcomes, we may not need to do any correction at all. Yeah. So we okay. might just focus on the content. We might just focus on the style. Depending on the outcome we are trying to achieve, our feedback will definitely uh, vary. Okay, thank you very much. Arhan Ojam is uh, raising his hand again. Uh, shall we say... Uh, uh, do you have anything um, else, Arhan Ojam, you want to say, or have you forgotten to lower your hand? <laughs> uh, one last sentence, yes, uh, because uh, our instructor, I mean, the uh, person who has asked the question said detailed feedback. Uh -huh. I thought that there were a lot of corrections there. So that's why I, uh, why I refer to working memory and vocabulary and grammar. Okay. So okay. Uh, most of the institutions, you know, ask us to, uh, give some uh, corrective feedback, actually, mm -hmm. or corrections. That's why. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe one time you should you shouldn't focus on surface level. Mm -hmm. Maybe next uh, next time you should focus on the deep uh, deep level, like content, uh, as Bergen Ojam said. So mm -hmm. okay, that's all. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, I don't see any other. Uh, well, there are some remarks and comments in the check box, but. I don't see any other questions. So, uh, Bergen Ojam, thank you very much. 
It, we really uh, enjoyed the session. We have refreshed uh, our uh, knowledge, let's say polished up, <laughs> and maybe started questioning some of the ideas that we have, at least I have. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Uh, for this I, very informative uh, talk. I, I really liked uh, being with you a lot and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I have started questioning my own uh, way of giving feedback, my own style, uh, the things I use, the things I don't use. Uh, this is really a consciousness raising kind of training for all of us and it is a long way uh, and there is a lot to uh, reach. Yeah. And uh, luckily, it never ends because, I mean, this is the joy of this journey. Yes, definitely. So uh, people are also thanking you in the chat box. Uh, they, they say that they have enjoyed it very much. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and hopefully we'll get uh, together again, maybe uh, next term. I don't know, after, I don't know. Uh, huh. Any, any time, any time. I'd Thank love you. To Thank uh, you. I don't know how you end it, but can I have a screenshot with the people who would like of to? Course, of course, of course you can. That will be an honor for us. <laughs> Give your best profile, guys. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> and maybe with our hearts. But what about my bad hair day? <laughs> you look wonderful. Don't worry. You look better than Brad Pitt. <laughs> Ready? Yes, we are. One more. I know, Joe, I'm going to share these pictures with you. Of course, of course, sure. And uh, you know that we will uh, release the video next week and we will share the link with you, Bergino Jam, so that you can also uh, refer to it in your own. Ah, Bergino Jam also has a YouTube channel. So if you're interested, uh, please visit her channel and uh, maybe subscribe and maybe leave some likes <laughs> after you. subscribing to Inget channel, of course. of course. Guys, I'll get you <laughs> if you do not subscribe. Well, thank you very much for participating to this talk. It's always a pleasure to be with you, my dear colleagues. Take very good care of yourselves. And of course, our speaker, please be safe. Stay safe, stay happy. So, any the, the link is just by Gnide on YouTube Tom. Oh, okay, okay. That's Thanks a lot, Ojem. Thanks. You find out me. <laughs> so, you. I'm ending it, guys. <laughs> bye bye. Have bye. fun. Bye bye. Thanks.